Welcome to Knox Makers for Tuesday Night Show and Share. Uh, we do this every Tuesday, rain or shine, uh, even during pandemics. Uh, Sean, do you have anything to show tonight? Darn it. Okay, well, we have two people on the list. This is the time where we uh, bring things that we've made or things that we're working on or things that we've completely messed up and we want to warn everybody, even if it's terrible, we want to see it because you put your love and effort into it. So please bring your projects to show. And first we have Russell, who's going to show a 3D picture. Thank you very much. Actually, I did not make this. Uh, I didn't. Steal things from other people and show them what they made. That's right, yeah. Don't say I didn't make this. Oh, well, actually, we have a double knot spy in our midst, and so he can't be seen um, on the interwebs. So I asked him if I could show it because I saw it, and I thought it was very cool. So here it is, a 3D picture of the mountains. How about that? Isn't that nice? Yeah. Oh, that's cool. Isn't this nice? So, I don't know if you can tell, well, let's see if I do this, you can. See, it is layered, so it gives you that nice depth effect um, done on the laser cutter. And each piece, each mountain, each Part was then painted and put onto the uh, composition. And I think it's real cool, and I think it would have been a shame if we didn't get a chance to see it. I agree. All right. <clears throat> Are there any questions? I don't know the answer, but I'll make something up. <laughs> to, no, the, that guy, yeah. yeah. All right. But anyway, I thought it was super cool, and I thought everybody should see it. So, so there it is. Thank you, Russell. Uh, second up, we have Simone, who has a Furby and buttons. All right, so I've brought this long Furby before, but um, here it is again. This is my long Furby. He's got an articulated spine made from doll armature. Uh, I took an old Furby stuffed animal and I ripped its face off and used its body as a pattern <laughs> and made him a new body. Um, I recently washed him. It is kind of annoying to wash stuffed animals. You have to like soak them in uh, detergent and you can't put them like in the washing machine because they like mats the fur. And then you have to dry them quickly or they mold inside, which is absolutely horrifying. Um, but I did that and then I brushed out his fur. I'm now patching up his holes. This is my long Furby. And then um, these are buttons I made because I went to a convention. And a convention during a pandemic is about as bad as you think it would be. So I made these little pins to commemorate it because the um, mascot is a little crab called Krabby. So here's the Krabby with that, you know, the Elmo gif where he's like got his arms up and there's fire behind it. That's what this is. And I um, printed out um, little pieces of paper with it, and I cut it out, and then I put it in this button press that I have, and I'm mailing it out to the people that I went to the convention with. So, so the Furby is mm -hmm. not the same outsides and not the same insides, but it occupies the same space. Well, the original Furby was about that big. I made him very long and poseable. Yeah. He makes a great neck. Yes? Did you say the internals of the Furby? I have the little, like, uh, pellet bag, the beans that were in it, and I have this, the, like, I guess it's the skin still. And these are the same feet, original feet. So I have most of the parts. I didn't save the fluff because that's kind of gross. No, it was just kind of smelly and matted together. Yeah. They stopped making these in the 90s, so 20-year-old uh, fluff is kind of gross. Yeah. I'll pass them around. 
I can get behind a mascot named Krabby, uh, especially during a pandemic. Uh, Sean said he didn't have anything to share, but I think he's lying, so I'm going to make him come up here and share something. I didn't lie, I just simply forgot. Uh, on Saturday, Tracy taught her wonderful Inkscape for the laser class. And if you should uh, ever have the chance to take it yourself and want to learn more about Inkscape, you should, because I have had my battles with it before and have only been able to do the most rudimentary of, of designs on it for my own projects and uh, wanted to learn how to do more uh, advanced stuff and one of the things we learned was how to trace bitmaps and so as a example I did if you're familiar with memes at all there's just a meme of these guys pointing at something and so I figured I would uh, do the trace bitmap function uh, unfortunately I did the I didn't do you should do the center line if you're doing just line drawings because if you can see uh, it actually cr traced the outside so it was actually two lines for every one of these lines and so that made them, I, I, was, I had never engraved uh, anything, or never engraved cardboard on the laser on Moonraker yet. So that was, especially with the new tube, so that was uh, an adventure in figuring out the presets for that. So the key is uh, very, as low as you can get it, we were, I was down at 5 and it wasn't firing, so I bumped up the power to 10% and then ramped the feed rate way, way up. Uh, and it still, still blew out the the mouth there and a few of the eyes, but this one actually did a pretty good hatch build job. And so that one held, uh, and yeah, it was, did the details all right. And uh, now it's just the stupid IRL meme. So, <laughs> so yeah, but yeah, if you ever have the chance to take the Inkscape uh, class and you wanna learn how to get a little more comfortable with Inkscape, I highly recommend it. Glad that class was used for high quality art, Sean. Thank you for that. Uh, that is all for show and share, unless someone has gotten courage since we started. No, nothing. Yes. Okay, nice. Okay, I'm I'm Cyrus Staff and uh, new member here. Uh, so. I've been doing woodworking for about 40 years, and uh, I was just going to show you a, a table that I'd made. Um, uh, it's not quite big enough. How do we zoom this in? Yeah, that's pretty. So that is, uh, that's hickory, and it came from a tree on my property that when we built our house, uh, we had to have probably 30 large hardwood trees taken down to put the house in. So one of them was a hickory tree that was sort of dead and uh, it came out with wood that looked kind of like this. I don't, I don't know, it's kind of spalted hickory or something. I'm not sure what it is. It's, it's hard as a rock though, so it's not real easy to work with. But anyhow, those are the boards and uh, glued them together basically. It's a real simple table. Uh, but my wife wanted metal legs. So I did something like this. So that's some, a square, just some square rectangular, I mean square tubing that I fabricated up into that. Don't look at the welds too closely, but it's welded together. And then the final what it ended up looking like in the living room. Let's see, get this thing going right here. Oh, nice. Ooh, cool. So. That looks like a photo you'd see on a website. Uh, it came out pretty good, but I think if you were here last week, the week before, I was asking one of the gentlemen about how did he get the surface of, that he was working with sanded perfectly flat. Well, this tabletop is not perfectly flat. If you look at it in the right, light it has a little little bit of waviness to it and stuff so i've got to go back and sand it again but uh i don't know if that'll ever happen or not but maybe <laughs> anyhow so that's what i have nice thank you very much anyone else yes i just wanted to show something uh i haven't made this but i 
think it's a great idea for somebody to make. I just went to the um, world's largest lawn or yard sale. That was like uh, Route 127 two weeks ago, 690 miles of yard sale. But anyway, um, I saw some pretty cool stuff, but this really intrigued me. This is called a uh, high noon sundial. And uh, I thought, if it wasn't $500, I would have probably bought it. But I think it would be pretty cool to make, and I'm not sure if you see how it works, but it's pretty cool that it, it is like an alarm clock for noon at high noon. And if you notice, there's a little magnifying glass hanging up there in space, aiming down at the little cannon. <laughs> And so you load the can with gunpowder and put a fuse in it, and at noon, if it's aligned correctly to the sun, it'll alert you to the fact that it's high noon. Wow. And so I thought, oh, that, that should be easily replicated. So yeah. I throw that out as a challenge to somebody. But I think I'm going to try and do this. I already have the little cannon, so the rest is pretty simple. But I Where thought, did you get a little cannon? Oh, they're all over the place, but you know, like. Uh, <laughs> you could also make a little cannon, you know, on a lathe, uh, turn one out, uh, you know, with a piece of steel. But uh, I picked one up because I like little things like that. So, anyway. So, do you do any glass work? Do you make that? Well, I have like a metal lathe, and I could turn stuff on a lathe, so I could do that. And I think now, as far as casting all the other intricate stuff, I probably wouldn't do that in brass. I'd probably just support it with other you know, simple structures. But yeah. Uh, but that's pretty ornate, and that's why it costs $500. But the good news is, even though I was tempted to buy it, I came home and looked on eBay, and I found the exact same thing on eBay for half that, $250. Wow. So I don't know if it's a true antique or not, but I saw a lot of cool stuff at the... Uh, I highly encourage everyone to do the world's longest yard sale. That's pretty cool. It runs for like four days, goes through four states. Wow. Yeah, it's, there's a lot of cool stuff there. So, in fact, if you're, if you're really bored, I could show you some more stuff. Um, I did buy this, and I'm hanging this. This is off a sunken ship, and uh, it's a, uh, there's a company that retrieves stuff from sunken ships, and so it's a little lamp. Oh, sorry. It's, um, it's a little lamp that came off a salvaged ship that they salvaged. So I bought that, and I've hung it on my back porch. So I'll show you how I did that maybe next time. I made a little mount for it and everything, and I put one of those antique LED bulbs in it with the, uh, it looks like an old Edison bulb, and it really looks pretty cool, and it's a lot cheaper than the kind of trash you buy at Lowe's and stuff like that for an outdoor uh, lamp. And it was, I got it for $60, which I was looking at Lowe's for a little outdoor fixture anyway, and Something from China is about 40 or 50, so I thought that was money well spent. And it is solid brass. It weighs about 25 pounds, so it's pretty cool. And uh, there's an old slot machine that I was tempted. That's like a 1900s slot machine, and there's another one. So there's just all sorts of cool things. There's a little railroad lantern that I thought I'd get for my camper. So there was just – it's – Anything you could imagine, just miles and miles of it, and some of it, you know, quite reasonable. So uh, I think makers would appreciate the uh, yard sale. Cool, thank you. Okay. Uh, I tried to, uh, tried to impress this on all my friends and relatives, but they all thought this was totally worthless. But I think that is high art. It's uh, a little bottle of Jack. Uh, Daniels, I think it's actually Captain Morgan, and it's pouring like whiskey into a bucket, and it says "relax," and so a it's a fountain. Yeah, a little continuous fountain, and I thought, boy, now that's creative, and no one I could knew said that would be worthy of being on their porch, but I thought it was pretty cool. So. I like going to junk shops and yard sales for inspiration, and then making my project list much longer, always. Uh, last week, there was like a ton of classes. The whole weekend, there was people here all the time, but this week, there is only one. So uh, on Friday, we have our new members onboarding, which is we hang out and eat donuts and talk about Knox Makers for anyone who's new, or if you're not new and you just want to come and hang out and eat donuts. 
Uh, that is on Friday in the classroom at 7, and that's the only thing on the calendar right now. So that's all I've got for tonight. If I could get a volunteer to empty the trashes, one of you two, please. And that's my spiel. Go and make things. Thank you. Thank you.